Hey, good morning, everyone. Hi, hey, morning. Hi, this is Jian. Hi, Jian. Hey. Nice to meet you. Thanks for joining us this morning. So let's give it another couple of minutes for some other folks to join and then we can get started. Sure. Awesome, I think we can get started. So yes, thanks for joining. Uh, so Gian uh, is gonna be talking about KubeDL, which is Cube Deep Learning. Um, so we're excited to learn about it and yeah, take it away. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I also have a couple of my colleagues joining as well. So including the uh, Rupin and the uh, Joe Kai. So they are my uh, colleagues. So they will present as well. I, I Sounds great. Then figure it out. Uh, let me share my screen. Oh, it requires that permission. Just give me one moment. Sorry, I have to rejoin. I uh, just give me one moment. Sounds good. Yeah, sorry, I changed my laptop, so it requires new set of permissions. Uh, uh, can you see the screen? Yep. Cool. Uh, so uh, let's get started. Uh, yeah, uh, today we just, uh, uh, you can see the main screen, right? Not the secondary screen. I'm not sure which one you are looking at. We can see the presentation. Oh, is the yeah looking at the presentation screen? Yeah, okay. the full screen. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, I'll talk a little bit about the context at Alibaba. So we developed this project at Alibaba, and then my colleagues, uh, they will do an introduction on the uh, several different components on Kubernetes and do a short demo on top of that. 
so the contacts we have is uh, we uh, so we are the platform team. Uh, basically, we support all the uh, business units across the company. Uh, so including the uh, the Taobao, uh, it's the standard shopping website like the Amazon.com and the the mapping uh, like the Google Map. We have the uh, equivalent equivalent stuff uh, called Gaude and the other uh, equivalent uh, uh, kind of like the sub companies of the Alibaba. So we are a very big organization. So we are. Uh, we are, we are a big team and we support uh, thousands of units and also thousands of users. So we, we run our infrastructure using uh, Kubernetes uh, starting like uh, four, almost four or five years ago. Uh, and we are one of the, I think we are one of the uh, biggest users uh, across the globe. So uh, we use it extensively almost uh, for every uh, microservice running in our uh, platform. Uh, the the mention the the service I mentioned above, so including all the shopping websites, and the mapping service and everything, uh, almost everything around top of that, uh, and also we run on top of Alibaba Cloud. So we are, so we are also a cloud vendor, just like Amazon AWS. We are also a cloud vendor that's uh, supporting uh, many of our. Uh, so most of the users are coming from the uh, Asian uh, uh, Asian side. Uh, so we are we are one of the biggest use uh, cloud vendor uh, in China, and also uh, we support. Uh, so in terms in terms of the workloads, uh, we we have several things. One is the microservice, and also some data processing jobs, and also uh, uh, the deeper deep learning jobs that we are going to talk today. Uh, in terms of scale, so uh, we have hundreds of Kubernetes clusters. Uh, large and small, a uh, few of them are very large, and a large amount of them are actually small. So, and we have a dedicated team to managing the Kubernetes clusters, uh, and so so, and also uh, the resources the resources are actually heterogeneous, and we we have uh, CPU, GPU, and F FPGA, and so on, and uh, yeah, and uh, a majority of them are of course CPUs, and also we host. I, I believe we are one of the largest. Deep users as well uh, in the world. Um, so, uh, especially in terms of ML platform, uh, we support uh, like thousands of users, internal users, uh, including data scientists and engineers, and so on. And also, uh, one different, uh, one unique thing is that uh, so we also because we have Alibaba Cloud, uh, and then we also host down the uh, the products like the training and serving stuff on our Alibaba Cloud. Uh, to support the ex external users, so we not only just serve our internal users, and then we use what we, uh, and then we ship what we use in internally on the other public cloud and support external users. So uh, a little uh, brief uh, description of out what we use internally look like. So we have uh, data pro data processing uh, jobs in the front. Uh, we mainly use ODPS, which is similar to a Spark kind of batch processing job. We use that to process in the, uh, the, the, the data uh, at front. And then we do a model training uh, using KubeDL for, uh, uh, for our one, one thing is we, we, we have some uh, internal uh, deep learning engines like SDO and, and Mars that's uh, developed in-house. And also we use industry trending ones like uh, PyTorch and TensorFlow. And uh, we, uh, we mostly mo uh, run them on top of uh, KubeDL and then change the models and then do the deployment. And also we, uh, we tune the deployment itself so that it can uh, have the best, uh, best resource configuration and also some kind of parameters and so on. So all, all of them run top of the uh, Alibaba Kubernetes infra and then on top of Alibaba Cloud. So we are basically uh, kind of like a cloud uh, service uh, environment, uh, then to that kind uh, that dynamically provision the uh, machines for our uh, workloads. Uh, uh, a little bit, a little bit of the training flow at Alibaba. So this is a bit of details. I, I will not talk too much in detail, but just a, a basic concept is that we have user users. Uh, we have a platform which we, we call it PAI Pi. So we, we have users submitting from the console and then uh, which translates into the uh, Kubernetes API server. 
and then the Cooper deal will uh, basically spawn up the jobs and that will uh, run uh, any of our host. And then we also have uh, other external external tools uh, like the log tailing agents and also uh, some uh, persistent agent that will persist the, the data, the metadata and the events into external DBs and some uh, log serving uh, service. Uh, and so on. So we have external dashboards and, and also some uh, log, log viewing tools to view the logs and so on. And also we, uh, we have a, a separate uh, storage system that will uh, mount the, the, code, the user code, basically. The, the user code will upload to the storage system and then it will be dynamically downloaded to the uh, host. Uh, so it's not that every time we bake an image uh, we we we, we we download the code dynamically after every time we run the jobs. So uh, this is a basic overview of what we have, and also in terms of deployment. Uh, so one unique thing that we use Kubernetes Morphin that will uh, basically uh, tune the de tune the model deployment in terms of its uh, resource amount and also its running parameters, so that it can be uh, run most efficiently on our ML platform. Uh, yeah, that's a short uh, background of uh, what we use at Alibaba. Do you have any questions? Otherwise, we, I transfer to my colleagues. Anybody else any questions? All right. All right, yeah. So uh, Chuka, can you, uh, can you continue? I will stop my screen sharing. Hi, hi everyone. Hey. I'll share my screen. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I had I have to do some system setups. Yeah, I think it's the same uh same uh permission stuff. Sorry, I have to exit the, the meeting and re-entry. No problem. Uh, I'll share my screen. And and can you see my screen? Yeah. Yep. Oh, all right. I will continue the presentation. So the main uh, so the main goal of Kubdl is to enable deep learning workloads run Kubernetes ecosystem more easily and efficiently. In general, Kubernetes uh, includes four, uh, four, stage, four stages, which consists of a complete ML pipeline, uh, which is the first one is chaining, uh, chaining frameworks in one controller and some, some uh, runtime enhancement. And, and the second one, second one is model lineage and uh, versioning. And, and, we mo and we automatic tuning of model deployment which has become an independent, independent component we call it Mervlin. And the last, uh, we, ma we, we manage the, the inference surface life cycle. And, and as the figure, uh, figures illustrated, components co uh, cooperate with, with each other and uh, streamline the process by automating these workflows and linking them together. Uh, in terms of model checking, uh, Kubdl checks the history of a model in a native Kubernetes CRD format, which is unique and easy for existing Kubernetes users to adopt and can leverage broad Kubernetes tooling, uh, tooling ecosystem. It is in, integrated natively with the chaining jobs 
and the serving stages to enable the full automation. This controller that is from the chaining job to the model generated and finally to the deployment of a model are all linearly checked and versioned within Kubernetes. And now I will show, I will uh, demonstrate how to how to submit a minimal uh, simplest uh, deep learning pipeline and build model artifacts into an immutable Docker image and deploy an inference surface with specific model version. Firstly, I will show you how to submit a distributed TensorFlow chaining job with declarative API. Uh, as the YAML file shows, we are able to describe, describe the expected specification of a TF job in low conceptual complexity and take for the advantages of Kubernetes, like resource request and resource limit. In this example, we prepare a TF job named TF MNIST estimator with five replicas. And typically a, a distributed TensorFlow job contains at, at least one worker and zero or more other roles, such as parent server, chief evaluator, and they cooperate with each other and shares global states. Back to this example, uh, Template represents this, the specification of the pod to be created for each replica. And the restart policy determines where the pod should be restarted when they exit. And the value exit code indicates that the restart behavior is, depend on, is dependent on exit code. And the other significant part is describing model version. This job reference to including which kind of storage system to intermediate in, which image repo to push, etc. Now we apply this, this job to our Unicode. We can see the five workers are, are in container creating phase. And the status of TF job has been in running. Since all workers have been in running state, we can view the output logs through Kube control logs command. And the chief worker will continually printing chaining progress in verbals, which with, a, uh, with its runtime parameters in each, in each iteration such as global steps per second and loss, and, uh, et cetera. It's a simple TF job, so it will finish quickly. And after job succeed, it will automatically trigger a model building, uh, model building pod in user space. And then the model image has, has started to building. Through logs, we through logs we are able to know that the, the model image has finally pushed to the target user image hub, and with a random string tag. In the meantime, we start to prepare a inference deployment manifest. The core part of inference is to organize a list of predictors. Each predictor is bound to a 
a specific model fraction. And in this example, we, uh, we assign this field with the latest generated model fraction. Sorry, my my uh, touchpad has broken. <laughs> and I, I can't exit my thing. Okay, no problem. Now you you have a Kubernetes operator, right? So and a controller somewhere, right? That does this. Yes, uh, yes, we have one. So Kubernetes uh, itself has several controllers, uh, mostly two controllers. One is that the one does the training stuff, training serving stuff, and the other is that the uh, the one uh, looping we'll talk about later, uh, which is to tune the model deployment in terms of its uh, resource requirement. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, does it work? Uh, my touch part. Uh, doesn't have the, the ESC button. Oh. Oh. Oh, maybe you can, how about exit and, I mean, close the terminal and then re re log in? Uh, sorry, I, uh, so I have to uh, stop uh, sharing my screen and uh, turn, turn around. No problem. Any questions so we can uh, answer uh, in the interim? So if you uh, want to deploy a kubedl, do you have a quick start guide or something on the GitHub repository so you want to get um, started very quickly? Yeah, we, we do have uh, yes, we, we do have uh, uh, a detailed uh, uh, quick start. Uh, yes, I, I think uh, uh, he skipped over one slide. Maybe while he's fixing up the laptop, I, I just talked a little about the uh, some some of the stuff. Let me know, uh, Chuka, if you are ready. Uh, I'm ready again. Oh, okay, uh, go ahead. Also, uh, let's continue. And users, uh, users can a uh, user can customize its uh, predict configurations such as model paths, and and here we present a predictor named a model predictor, one with model just we built, and we assign two replicas for serving service and following the given template. Moreover, traffic can be uh, distributed uh, can be distributed by field traffic uh, weight, and since we have only one model version served in this example, uh, so traffic weight is assigned as 100. And now we apply this uh, inference surface to, to the Minikube cluster. Uh, the Kubedl will inject uh, a model loader in a container, pulling model uh, pulling model artifacts from Image Hub and deliver them to the main container through shared folder. Uh, since all replicas or predictors are running, which means inference surface is available for end users. Uh, so I've pre-launched a busy box pod, and we and we which uh, we are able to exact in the busy box and uh, construct, a, construct a request. So, 
So, so we uh, manually construct request to the to to this inference service. And the, and the model we just changed, we call it MNEST. And, it, and, and, and the backend response with state available and the status, and the status code OK, which means this this model has has successfully deployed and is and is available for end users. Question: Do you have this? Uh, do you have this behind an HBA and uh, 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 scaler, or, or just a deployment, or is it behind a service? Or yeah. Uh, as for HPA, uh, each predictor has has its uh, deployment control, so uh, it can integrate with uh, existing HPA uh, solutions like uh, native Kubernetes HPA controller or, or KEDA. Nice. So this is in my presentation. So one question is this, this, this is the model available, right? But the then people can make requests and about a, uh, a prediction and then you get a different answer. Yeah, uh, in this example, uh, we, we built a minimum data set in, a, in the image, but in production users, uh, users will share a model and uh, the input data set is from the, their uh, production environment. So, uh, so, the, so in this example, the, the pipeline is uh, is minimal and uh, and 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 can just works but not have a uh, have that uh, precise uh, result. Uh, yeah, makes sense. So looping will do the uh, next stage of presentation. Okay, uh, I'm sharing screen. Can everyone see my presentation page? Yep. Uh, okay, uh, hello everyone. I'm looping from Alibaba. And once the model is created, and we have another project named the Morphling. And next, I will introduce uh, how to use Morphling in tuning the model serving configurations before their, before their deployments. Uh, we know that efficiently deploying the model serving services after they are well trained, this task requires careful tuning of the hardware and uh, runtime uh, configurations. For example, you have to specify the computation resources, such as the CPU cores requested by the, each serving container. And you also uh, need to specify the GPU memory size of the container if GPU sharing techniques are enabled. And at the, at, uh, on the other hand, you have also to specify some runtime parameters, which are also very important to the uh, service performance. For example, uh, the maximum byte processing size of the model serving services and the parallel thread and et cetera. And a, a well-tuned configuration can significantly improve the model serving performance, such as you can get a higher peaking uh, query per second, aka QPS of your container. And at the same time, you can reduce your resource cost of this deployment. So to this end, we have developed another uh, independent project named Morphly to tune the optimal or near optimal configuration before your model is deployed as online services. 
So the Morphling, uh, this name is originally a, a Dalton hero, uh, which changes his shape for better fighting performance. So we hope that uh, by using Morphling, we can also get a, we can also change the configurations uh, to get a better performance and reduce the uh, monetary cost. So to tune the model serving configurations, Morphling requires users to specify the profiling experiment interface. In particular, the users need to provide, uh, firstly, the machine learning model, probably by specifying the, specifying the model version output by the our QDL training precise, or by the a customer defined Docker image, which includes the model, the, the machine learning model inside. So uh, you also need to specify the tuning objective of this tuning task and the uh, tunable configuration parameters, of course, with their types and uh, search uh, parameter search ranges. And uh, as we can see, it's essentially a hyper parameter tuning task. So you also need to choose the uh, hyper parameter tuning sampling algorithm, such as grid search, random search, or Bayes optimization, and etc. And you also need to specify the sampling budget, which is a number of trials you want, a number of configurations you want to you want to test. So during the tuning procedure, the experiment the experiment governs the entire parameter tuning process with iterative trials. And with uh, so. <laughs> And, and each trial manages the low level container behaviors, such as launching a serving instance and initializing a client side stress testing job. And this figure below illustrates this workflow. Within the sampling budget, Morphling iteratively communicates with a sampling algorithm server to get the next configuration for performance test. And then starts start this trial to evaluate that configuration. When performing a, each trial, the model serving instance is launched, and its runness will trigger the client a, a client job a performance stress testing job. Uh, for example, you may stress test the peaking QPS of your container under such a specific configuration. And after this stress test job completes the measured metrics such as the QPS are stored in a database and also reported to the experiment for record. For record. And this uh, profiling experiment will complete when the sampling budget is reached out. And finally, we will get the uh, well-tuned uh, model serving configurations with respect to our previously specified tuning objective. So next, I will show a simple demo uh, here, uh, can we see the, the web page here uh, in the screen? Yep. There we go. So, uh, okay. And, and next, I will use the Morphling UI for the next for the following demonstration. So first, let's create a new uh, profiling experiment for the MNIST model to look at just train. So here we have a, a new profiling experiment named demo experiment in the default namespace. And for the hyperparameter tuning, we choose grid search as our sampling algorithm to sample a few configurations for performance testing. And we set the parallel trial as one, which means that uh, at each time moment, uh, we only have one configuration under testing. And we set the sampling budget, uh, which is also the total trial number as four. And in this, sam uh, in this demo, we set the tuning objective is to search the configuration that maximize our peaking QPS. It's a really simple and straightforward objective. And here we have two tunable parameters. The first one is a resource, uh, the CPU cores requested by the serving container uh, that has two, uh, two, uh, two candidates. And the second one is a maximum batch processing size. Uh, and also has two candidates to tune. And here to stress ties to the, the peaking QPS your, uh, your, your uh, serving container can provide, 
we have an uh, out of the box stress testing tools specified by this demo. And you can also uh, use your own customer defined uh, performance testing tools, of course. And finally, we have a YAML specify how specifies how to is establish uh, your model sorry in container and your models in port or deployment. So that's all we need to uh, specify in this experiment. And let's submit it. So here we go. And at the in, in this monitoring page, there are uh, some. Uh, we can see the status of the ongoing tuning procedure. We have this experiment here and it has not finished yet. Uh, so far it has created one trail and it's not succeeded yet. And there are some basic settings we just specified. And here is a list of the trails we got. Here we got our first trail which has, which has the configuration of two CPU cores with registers of one. So uh, uh, typically each, uh, each trial will uh, spend one minute or so before it completes. So to save our time, I have prepared a same experiment here with a, another name named the prepared experiment. So we can just step into this uh, finished experiment to check the final result we got for this tuning task. And here, uh, after this experiment succeeded, we got four complete, uh, complete uh, trials with their configurations, two tunable parameters, CPU cores and batch size. And their objectives are QPS. Here are their uh, QPS values. And as our objective is to find the configuration that maximizes the QPS. So once the uh, experiment finishes, we got the optimal uh, configuration we searched so far, which is uh, two CPU cores with batch size of two. And under this configuration, the QPS we have tested is 186. So that's a, a really simple demonstration. And you can also specify more complicated uh, tune, uh, tuning objective. For example, uh, the trade-off between this QPS and the resource cost. And you can also specify a larger tuning uh, uh, space or a, a more, a more sampling bodies, which will of course uh, give you a better performance, a better configuration, and it will also cost your longer time. And you can also use your sophisticated sampling algorithms to uh, fill a more efficient sampling procedure. So uh, that's all I wanna show so far. And any questions are welcome, thank you. Uh, this tuning is just for serving, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's now for training, correct? Yes, it's for, uh, it's for uh, serving before your model is deployed as online services, yeah. Uh, thanks. It, is this part of the KubeDL open source project. So it's Morphling is just another component within KubeDL. And uh, yeah, it's it open together. source project, but it is uh, kind of uh, in, independent of the original KubeDL project in GitHub. We have an independent project, but I, we think it's a logically a uh, component in the KubeDL project, yeah. Got it, got it. So, any, other, any other questions from Kevin, Alina, Christian? No, I don't have questions. Yeah, just a little more background. So uh, we use Morphling a lot to uh, reduce some of our cost because uh, I mean, the GPU is expensive and reducing the cost of GPU is actually uh, one big motivation for, especially for large cluster size. Yeah, just a little bit of background on that.
Cool, cool. And you already like a sandbox project in the CNCF, but um, what are some of your um, plans to get more exposure? And are you planning at some point go for incubation? Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, so uh, our plan is first, of course, so uh, by, uh, so after we enter the CNCF sandbox and uh, we can get more exposures and also we can, uh, 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 get some more users on our stuff, uh, and uh, right now we we do have uh, several uh, 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 collaborators uh, uh, in community, and also uh, we we also leverage our users internally. So we we have a big amount of users internally that uh, can uh, drive some of the user use cases. I mean, uh, because we have var various uh, use scenarios, and some of them actually. Uh, uh, some of the actually, I mean, uh, also uh, can be commonly uh, applied to other, other. I, I believe other organizations or companies as well. And also, we we serve it as a product. So the pro the cloud products also run, run on top of uh, Kubernetes uh, engine. And also, we do have uh, external users that use our uh, products uh, indirectly. So we believe we have we can get more use cases. And also polish the the stuff uh, uh, further, and also get more users, uh, uh, and yeah, and so also maybe maybe uh, doing more blogs and uh, uh, presentations and so. On. Awesome. Are there any other organizations besides Alibaba using it or not? Uh, some of the names you probably don't know. Uh, there's a Tencent Cloud. I'm not sure if you know about that. So that's one of the big, another bigger user. Uh, so they are evaluating the, and uh, they 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 run it uh, uh, in their own environment. Got it. Got it. All right, any other questions, last minute questions? Well, we have another 15 minutes, so we'll give you back those uh, 15 minutes. So well, thank you very much. And I'll go ahead and upload this video to the CNCF uh, Tag Runtime channel and let's keep in touch. Yeah. Yeah, sure, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.